Welcome back. Today I want to talk about a student league. Someone, uh, one of my subscribers, told me about this student league that's going on. Very cool. I just heard about it recently. Uh, it's basically a place where college students can participate essentially for free uh, in Deep Racer. Now, there's a big difference between uh, student league and regular open league. And, you know, to be honest with you, it's a it's a big big difference the main thing is the speed is limited to one meter per second top speed and the hyper parameters are locked to the default values so now anyone who's done deep racer knows that the hyper parameters make a big difference in how you can train the model so that's really challenging to be locked into a super high discount factor for example secondly it's a it's a continuous action space so it takes longer to train and what you see here is my model that I created using, again, the hyperparameter settings for Student League, the same action space, uh, my, one of my first continuous, uh, I guess, first successful continuous reward functions. And I have to say, it was a great learning experience, even for someone who, like me who's been doing this for a couple of years, it really forced me to think about continuous reward functions and uh, really take my reward functions to the next level to be honest so i'm going to talk about this here so as i mentioned i created a a brand new uh, model build this is it right here if i go to uh, the training tab you see it's a well-behaved function meaning that the rewards increase and as the rewards increase the the um, average completion for training goes uh highly correlated with that so it increases as well so that's the one that's really good and you can see how quickly this converge so i trained this locally uh so what this 10 iterations i would say safely after 20 iterations pretty locked in but you can see it starts completing laps consistently after about 10 iterations now i want to make sure you guys trust me here so i'm going to show you uh, the action space, 0 to 1.5 to 1, and the steering angle is negative 30 to 30. So same ones as in um, Student League. And over here, you can see the hyperparameters are exactly the same, right? So uh, hyperparameters are the same here, and the action space is the same. Now you probably want to know what the reward function was. Well, let me let me tell you about that real quick the following reward function you know at a high level here i'm looking at i think of it this way right i have three components of my reward function car heading i want to make sure it's pointing in the right direction that i'm steering in a smart way right so that's f of x i am following a center line or race line approach right basically and i need to have a i create a bonus to say how far away am i from the center line or race line Again, you can get equally good results following the center line. Um, this, the race line might shave a couple of seconds off, but it's not much. Uh, and then finally, the speed bonus, right? Because when you think about it, you should be driving at one meter a second the entire time, right? The pros are racing around this track at two, maybe even three meters a second. <clears throat> so you can definitely do one meter a second, no problem. So then the question becomes, all right, if I have functions for each of these bonuses here, right? How do I combine? How do I combine these, right? And that's, uh, that's the magic. That's what you got to figure out. Now, I've already talked about my, what my favorite tool is for visualizing the reward function. It's GeoGebra. Any graphing library would do, but this is what I use. So if you have a function that looks like, I don't know, uh, X for the speed, and then you add, you know, um, Y for steering. You got to ask yourself, okay, if I add these two, does this make sense? This is what the reward function is going to look like, right? Well, maybe you want to do a different shape, right? So this, this is super helpful, right? Uh, to do all kinds of shapes. And, um, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes the, the website does hang up a little bit. So you have to be a little patient with it. But, you know, there are all these formulas you could be using, right, that, that is super helpful. And if you want to just 
So that's the 3D calculator. The regular calculator here, graphing gra uh, calculator, is really useful to use understand basic shapes. So, for example, if we want to optimize a reward function, this shape is bad, right? Or maybe bad, depending on what the x values are, right? Um, anyway, you can you may want to look at something like this instead, right? Where you're optimizing for this midpoint, right? So again, you want to be thinking continuously, continuous functions such as these geometric functions, I mean, not um, algebraic functions, when you're working with a continuous action space. So a lot of the stuff that you see online, on Medium, on Reddit, or even the AWS uh, videos, you have to remember that that was all created with discrete action spaces. And here we're working with a continuous action space. So you need to think about continuous reward functions. Okay, let's switch over to log analysis. If you guys are not using this, uh, you really have to. I, I, honestly, I think you basically have to be training locally or on uh, Google Cloud or AWS uh, with your own instances to really have a shot at this. Uh, I don't think the 10 hours a month is truly enough. Um, so you should be looking at log analysis. This is what this is. And uh, let's you see the track, right? Here's the track for this month with the waypoints. And what's cool is it shows you the training progress. So here you see my progress per iteration started slow and then boom, basically 90 plus. So that's great. Now the question is, is my training or my lap times getting slower or faster with every iteration? So I'm just gonna scroll below here, a bunch of charts. If you guys are interested in knowing how to use this thing, left, leave me a comment uh, in, in the video below. But let's just scroll down and see, uh, okay, analyzing training progress for completed laps. Here we go and look at the times per iteration right so completed laps started showing around 20 like 15 or 20 iterations in it started around 44 seconds per lap and it dropped down to about 40 40 plus right and you can see there's some overtraining happening right so it was it was under trained over here then the, the lap time dropped down to below 40 probably close to 39 and a half or so. And then it started increasing again. So I was overtraining. You know, I, if I was keeping an eye on this, I would have stopped it around 40 to get that maximum speed. But, you know, I, I left it running and uh, this is what I got. So seeing this, this is what you want to see, right? You want to see your times decrease the more you train. If, uh, believe me, usually, <laughs> In the past, my, my functions looked different. It looked like it was kept increasing, right? Uh, you don't want that. So keep an eye on that. Finally, you can plot out the, what this, um, the tracks, or I guess the, the path looks like. And as you can see, it's following um, pretty decent optimal track. It's doing a good turn here. So that's good, pretty straight. And uh, overall, pretty happy with this, given that's my first model build. Uh, using the a variant of a model I've been trying to perfect on the pro side. All right, so I was able to get a a uh, snapshot of what the student board looks like right now, and you can see that the current time is one fifty one one fifty nine. So this model I just created would be number one right now, right? And by basically an eight second margin. So there you have it, folks. Uh, you know, it is possible to do really well in this competition. And I showed you how I did it by focusing on those uh, reward bonuses and then combining it in a smart way. Again, use the, use the tools, the graphic tools, and make sure that you're creating a, a continuous um, surface, right, that has a global maximum. Otherwise, the model you won't find out. Now, if you want to learn more about graduated this um, gradient descent, and uh, let me know. Uh, I can provide. I can talk about that a little bit more, so you understand the, the theory behind how the how the model actually finds um, how it uses the reward function to find the the, the optimal the optimal uh, race line and and drive better. So let me know what you guys think about this. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, like and subscribe. And that's how 
that's how I know this content is interesting for you guys. Good luck out there. There you have it, folks. Team Boltron. Stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe and click that like button if you want to see more of this content. 